Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the next episode of our Factorio Vanilla playthrough. Currently I'm standing here right in the center of one of these um, ore delivery blocks. How That's how I call them actually. Um, as you can see we have six smelting columns in the next or in the adjacent block. So I had six stations first. Then I realized that it's well, completely unnecessary, as we could also deliver four full belts of copper here. Actually, if you are using the system that I'm currently using, you wouldn't even need this uh, balancer here. You could simply go for uh, four lanes straight into the ovens. It would work perfectly fine. As you see, there's kind of a lot of combinator stuff going on, so I'll go through that quickly and explain what is going on there. So we have, well, actually two systems combined here. First of all, the Matsuri's um, tr balanced train unloader in this case, of course, for the loading stations. Uh, we also use the balanced loader. Um, so how does that work? First of all, it collects uh, or it counts the amount of items, in this case ore, stored in all of these chests. So that's 50k at the moment, 50k copper. And then it puts that into here, into this arithmetic combinator. And in there it is divided by the negative amount of chests. So we get the negative average uh, amount in a chest. So in this case we have uh, minus 2000. So we should have 2000 uh, as an average in these chests. Then uh, that value is passed to these inserters and they compare it to the amount that is in their chest. So all the chests are linked to each other and to this power pole that is passed to here. Then that output signal of that arithmetic combinator is linked to uh, all of the inserters and these inserters are individually uh, connected with green wire to their chests. And this, uh, this way they can compare whether the amount in their chest is higher than the amount in the average chest and if it is higher then they um, then they get active and put something on the belt. If the amount is lower than the average chest then they won't uh, output anything. Okay so that's the easy part I would say. The next thing is a little bit more complicated. So, first of all, uh, we have kind of an automatic system. These over here, they are just for helping out to understand that. So, first of all, the amount of ore that we have right here in the chests is also passed to this arithmetic combinator. And this one here, you can set the amount that is possibly stored in all of these chests. And that is of course 24 by 48 by 50, so that's uh, 57,600. Then the amount of, in this case, copper ore is subtracted and that's output as uh, copper ore as well. Then that's passed along to this arithmetic combinator. In here you'll have to set the amount that is... Um, is possibly carried by one train. So in this case for ore it's 8,000, for plates it's 16,000. If, you, if you're uh, talking about a 1.4, which I'm currently using for all of the trains. Well then uh, it has currently it has an input signal of 4.5k divided by 8,000 is less than 1, so it doesn't output anything to over here. But if it would output something to here, in, in a nutshell, well, these two compare the value given here, so how much trains we can fit in our chests, 
to the amount that we set in here. That's uh, for these stations over here a two. And that is simply uh, the amount of trains that can stack here. So as we don't really have a real stacker here, we're just having space for one more train. I set it to two. So this station can handle two trains at maximum. These two just compare uh, whether we can have two trains coming in or only one. And then furthermore, this uh, signal is passed to this one. And here it's simply, um, this uh, multiplication is simply to have this switch to L, uh, to the signal L, and then in here it is set, so it's ticked the set train limit and the train limit input signal is the L which we set in here. So another thing we shouldn't forget about is of course this one over here and uh, the connection to this one because this one is actually a really nice thing then later on. It converts the amount of trains that are being requested by this station to, um, in this case, of course, copper ore, but that's also something you would change for then iron ore or whatever. And then that's connected to this power pole, and from this power pole you'll put it out to your network. And then if you're having a look on one of these big power poles, you can see currently we're uh, requesting two copper ore trains or we are needing two copper ore trains and the green signal carries um, the amount that is provided at the mining outposts or mining locations. I'm currently not quite sure. I think I didn't connect up all of these yet or actually these three I did but we have three more over there. So those I'll need to connect up real quick. Uh, we have one here connected. Really nice. Um, the next one isn't though. And then these aren't connected and it's also not connected to the general grid. Currently, well that is of course not copper anymore, that's stone. Nonetheless, it's, as you can see, 55k, there won't fit in another train, so that's full. And then you can, anywhere in the base, set up a display for that, which we'll do probably in the next episode. Or, well, probably I'll show you my version of the display, and we are not gonna design it together, as I already did that on Another World some time ago. So, well, we probably should uh, go and have a look at one of those mining outposts, I guess, and check out the uh, locations over there. I'll just set that to manual and then we can go to, well, I think to the right now, so up here in the north, we should have, well, we have uh, an iron location here. So that should be should be easy to understand here. Uh, we have seven belts of iron ore, seven red belts of iron ore coming in. Those are fed into there. Actually, I have the impression that there's some kind of an error going on here because, well, because of this. So probably the blueprint book I'm currently using for those has a tiny error with the 7 to 4 balancer. So I should definitely uh, change that out. As I used that, well, well, more than once actually. So first of all, the loader system, the balanced loader from the Matsuri's uh, from Matsuri um, is actually working quite similar. It collects all the amount of ore currently in the chest, compares it here uh, or divides it here by the amount of chests, outputs that to the stack inserters 
and those compare it to the amount in their chest and they are active as long as uh, in this case of course their chest has less ore in it than the average chest has so that's working quite similar and or only the other way around than the unloading station of course next up we have once again a similar system that compares um, or that checks how many trains we can fit in this station in this case or how many trains are currently stored in the chests so in this case we have 57k of iron ore divided by 8000 it's roughly seven trains that's then passed to these which compare it to this one here I've set it to three as we have a lot more space here but didn't throw in a stacker and then uh, after that's compared uh, it puts that into here and into the station of course and sets the limit there furthermore the signal is also transferred to over there and then to the network and as you can see here we're currently supplying or we have in stock eight trains of iron ore and four trains of copper ore and now we should go to our train depot uh, which is working quite different than the depot of the LTN uh, system that I've showed uh, that I've shown uh, in quite a few videos now I should probably do another tutor tutorial video on these train stations this train system at some point well I totally ran past it doesn't really matter we can park here uh, because that's not really used that much so in here as you can see we currently have a few trains with ore and that is the real advantage of the or one of the real advantages of this system so in the well let's let, we're, we were talking about copper all the time so let's um, let's explain it with a copper train first of all the train stops at the depot and waits for two seconds of inactivity just to make sure that the uh, train is fueled uh, enough then it goes to the copper station or copper or provider station so either this one or as you can see they are all named uh, the same we have two copper ore uh, stations copper ore supplies after that or actually in there it waits for full cargo and as, of course as well uh, two seconds of inactivity just to make sure it's finished loading and then the once again it goes to the depot in there it doesn't have a waiting condition because it doesn't need one as it's just waiting for the um, for the drop off the requester station to be free and to to have the train limit go to one or more and of course there it has the empty cargo and inactivity once again so it's very very handy to have these stored here it's like a buffer chest a big big buffer chest of 8000 ore or coal or well 16000 plates whatever you want we could definitely put them closer to the stations so have some kind of a um, depot station right behind it or something like that but I found that this is kind of the best way to do it for me at least of course there are tons of different designs for those and well I really hope it made the thing a little clearer and well what's the problem right here um, is it my parking or uh, well we have a little signal conflict so first of all we'll tell this guy to go back to the mall and then I should probably uh, well this is coming to here 
And well, we don't really need to go this way. We actually never go this way, so why bother the trains with that? But let's just get rid of that. It's totally unnecessary. And then, well, over here we have the same thing for a coal station and that, well, we could, of course, while we're at it, just connect that to the grid so we know how many tr uh, coal trains are needed here. We have another coal station, uh, requester station, to the left of our... So actually it's right over here to fuel all these smelters as we're currently not using any uh, electric furnaces. Well, and these outposts I didn't connect either, I guess, so those are... Well, this one is connected, but not all of them are connected. But that's okay, I'll go through them. Uh, that was close. In between episodes sometime. I really hope it got clearer what I wanted to point out here. As you can see, currently we're having actually three iron trains sitting here and waiting uh, that one of the iron stations gets freed up and then they just go and unload there. So that's really handy and really easy to to build and then also really easy to add upon. So especially if you're if you're planning on a mega base, um, this is a super nice vanilla train system to to do so. Well, we currently have two more empty trains here. Uh, we should just copy this one so we have another coal train and then maybe a second one of those as well. As it's good to have, I guess. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, then please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And, well, see you guys next time. Have a good one and stay safe. Bye!